Welcome to the Dr. Lori Morris podcast, where she interviews experts in health and science, sharing their expertise so you can live your healthiest life. This episode of the podcast is proudly sponsored by Fit Vegan Coaching, the world's leading whole food plant-based body recomposition program for Gen X and baby boomers. Founded by Maxime, whose personal journey began after losing his ex fiance to breast cancer, Fit Vegan Coaching is on a mission to disease-proof the world through the transformative power of plant-based eating and fitness. This program is a Rolls Royce of plant-based coaching, offering all-inclusive services, personalized plans, world-class accountability, lifelong support, and more. Say goodbye to the yo-yo dieting and embrace a lasting transformation that will rev up your metabolism even post-transformation. Ready to take charge of your health and vitality? Head over to fitvegan.ca, that's fitvegan.ca, and mention Dr. Lori for exclusive bonus savings when you sign up. Don't miss this opportunity to join the movement towards a healthier, fitter, and more vibrant you. This episode of the podcast is proudly sponsored by The Healing Kitchen, your path to vibrant health. Immerse yourself in the transformative program, guided by the combined expertise of myself, Dr. Lori Marbus, and Chef Brittany Giroudi, who has lost 70 pounds on a whole food plant-based diet. Here's what's in store for you. Virtual weekly sessions. Engage in an immersive 60-minute virtual session every single week, where you'll delve into the world of wholesome plant-based goodness right from your own kitchen. Cooking with Brittany the first half hour. Unleash your inner chef as you're captivated by Chef Brittany Giroudi's culinary mastery that will delight your taste buds and nourish your body. Medical Q&A with Dr. Lori the last half hour. Prioritize your well-being during the second half hour. I will personally address your medical inquiries, providing evidence-based insights and personalized advice, empowering you to make informed choices for your health. So join us on the Healing Kitchen to help you step into a healthier and most vibrant future. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dr. Lori Marvis. And today I get to welcome back a very dear friend and just such an amazing person, Dr. Kim Williams. How are you today? Good, good, good. It's so good to to hear your voice and to see you again. Yes. And I know you are a very busy man, so we'll get right to the point. So I think there's two things that I constantly hear about. One is cholesterol and then hypertension. So if we can maybe jump on the cholesterol, because I just kind of share some of the questions that we get often. I know we've answered these before in other interviews, but I think it's always worth reiterating. Maybe there's some new research or something about uh, some new drug or therapy or thoughts. Yes. I've been keeping up on some things. So When it comes to cholesterol, so someone has embraced, let's say, lifestyle measures, interventions, eating a whole food plant-based diet, yada, 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 no history of CAD. How do you treat someone who comes to see you maybe whose total cholesterol remains above 200, their LDL is not 190 necessarily, but definitely above 100, not ideal. How do you address those? Because that is where a bulk, I'd say, of my patients come and they ask these questions like, well, do I start a statin or don't I? So that was actually a very easy question to answer two weeks ago. <laughs> okay, um, I'm hoping that everybody will write it down, but understand that uh, at the new American Heart Association meeting, um, uh, I guess weekend before last, there is a new algorithm. It's called the Prevent Calculator. It has not come out yet, so oh. I'm going to talk. I'm going to pretend as if that this is two weeks ago and we don't know what about it. Now, now, just to tell you, why would we need a new risk calculator? Because there's finally a recognition by American Heart that kidney disease is one of the leading contributors to heart disease. And for all of you out there in plant-based world, please put in your search engine the words vegan diet, CKD or chronic kidney disease. And you will be stunned that you have never heard this before, that not every physician is adopting it because animal protein, turns out, is what's hurting people's kidneys. And there's a unique relationship between ESRD, and stage renal disease, which is dialysis, and having eaten red meat. It's dose-related. The more you eat, the more dialysis you end up on, if you survive. And the reverse is true as well. In multiple trials, a plant-based protein as an intervention will take your numbers and make them go towards normal instead of what 
happens the other way where they just keep getting worse and worse. So anyway, um, my comment about cholesterol was two weeks ago would have been around the ASCVD risk calculator. I'm hoping people will write that down because we still are using it, but hopefully not for long because the new prevent calculator, which is not out yet, but they've talked about the, the fundamentals, includes kidney disease. That's something that was always missing from our risk calculator. Um, mm. So anyway, uh, how do we deal with cholesterol? It's interesting that it really isn't about, our cholesterol drugs is, aren't about the cholesterol. They're about the risk. So starting about you know, 2013, so 11 years ago or 10 years ago, we stopped using them for the number and started using them for the risk. So that includes diabetes, smoking. Um, and I have to say that with emphasis because I'm now living in Kentucky uh, and the, the Commonwealth of Kentucky has a history of tobacco growing and there's that tobacco is still going. And I just have to say every opportunity that we can use to make an intervention on anyone who's smoking is going to benefit them so much because that's, and this is a, a, so why is it such a big deal in this conversation? Because people don't may, maybe realize that your bad, everybody's heard that your bad cholesterol is your LDL, but there's different types of LDL. There's small, dense LDL, which is really bad for your arteries, and fluffy LDL, not as much, but oxidized LDL is nine times more likely to go into an artery and make plaque. How do you oxidize your LDL? Smoke cigarettes, okay? And so, so putting a calculator that includes smoking tries to reflect that risk. And sure, people will die of lung cancer, and, and, and the like uh, from smoking, but they get heart disease as well. Blood pressure is an, uh, an accelerant of plaque uh, by damaging the arteries and you try to repair them uh, with cholesterol typically. And so when you have, and diabetes does the same thing. So you have a calculator that doesn't do weight, it doesn't do kidney disease, but it does age, gender, ethnicity, okay? And only, but un, unfortunately, only black and white. And I'll just do a tangent for a moment, moment to say the reason to do that is that the African American population has about twice the risk of the the majority of the white population. The problem is it doesn't reflect everything. It's not about being black, and that's one of the things of the new Prevent calculator. They took out race, and they put in social determinants of health, mm. but they also put in kidney disease. Because we, the black population, are twelve percent of the population and thirty-five percent of the dialysis patients. Wow. wow. Yeah. So, so if I, I'm doing too many tangents, but don't you don't you want to know why the black people? Is it yeah. is it just the the Southern diet from University of Alabama, uh, Birmingham, uh, in the Regards trial? No, it's not just eating animal products and um, sugar sweetened beverages and all the stuff. Uh, it's not just the diet. It's actually genetics. And so why would Blacks have a gene that, that codes for more kidney disease? Well, many people have heard of sickle cell, right? How does sickle cell become a prominent feature in the African and therefore African-American population? Well, because it gave you immunity to malaria. So they became overrepresented in the gene pool, right? Mm. Well, guess what? Our APOL1 gene, that codes for chronic kidney disease in African-Americans protected back generations ago in Africa, protected from African sleeping sickness, trypanosomiasis. And so it becomes overrepresented in the population and you eat red meat, you're African-American, you have that gene, you end up with chronic kidney disease, higher blood pressure, diabetes, wow. which are dietary, and they pile up on your kidneys and then that gets your heart. 12 different mechanisms of how chronic kidney disease affects your heart, coronary arteries, the valves, calcium deposits where they shouldn't be, making the muscle thick when the blood flow is going down. It's just a disaster. And so that's why every place that I've gone, I've tried to develop a cardiorenal clinic, get the nephrologists and the cardiologists to work together. Mm. Okay, so going back to the risk calculator to answer your question. Um, so right now, until the prevent calculator comes out, we have one that has uh, race in it um, and diabetes, hypertension, and then it asks you for the level of the cholesterol, all right? And when you put all that in there, you come up with a 10-year risk 
of heart attack, stroke, and death. And that's how we manage cholesterol. So if somebody has horrible numbers and their risk is 2%, we don't really treat that. We tr with medication, we treat it with lifestyle. Try to get it down because we know darn well that it's not just your cholesterol. It's the area under your lifetime cholesterol curve that tells you how bad you're going to do from, from heart disease. So get it down, get it down early, plant-based diet, exercise. Now, there are people, there are a lot of genes out there that code for higher cholesterol levels. And everyone's heard of familial hyperlipidemia and that some people get the two bad genes. And, you know, that would be the Mona Lisa with the, if, if you haven't seen this, look at Mona Lisa and you see that she's got the xanth, uh, xanth, xanthalamosoma on, above one eye and a xanthoma on her hand. You can actually see da, da Vinci depicting that. And apparently she died at age 35, which would be typical of a uh, person with familial hyperlipidemia. Most people, cl classic genetics, would actually only get one of the two genes. So so-called so heterozygous, if you like the term, uh, uh, hyper, familial hyperlipidemia. So they they can live into their 50s and 60s even, uh, but they might start having heart attacks in, in their 40s. Bottom line is, if you have one of those disorders, your LDL is going to be very high. And so we have two criteria that are based on the level. Uh, the one you mentioned, actually, <laughs> that was mm -hmm. 190. Mm -hmm. If your LDL is above 190, you should instantly go on the drugs while you're doing your lifestyle management. Uh, if it's a consistently greater than 160, though, that's also mm -hmm. in the guidelines to try and get on medication while you're lowering it with uh, diet and exercise. So that, I would say, are the newest things. Yes, we do have new drugs, uh, particularly small interfering RNAs and so-called PCSK9 inhibitors, injectables that uh, will, you know, uh, the, S, the um, small uh, interfering RNA actually is twice a year, um, but it has to be an infusion center, it's not the easiest thing, but really expensive, worsening healthcare disparities, don't get me started on the expensive drugs and how, you know, uh, the wealthy population, we used to talk about race, it's less about race and more about economics. So the wealthy population can have all the newest of everything. And, the, and you know, when the insurance rejects it for a per person, poor person, if the company doesn't come up with a, a plan, and I, I'll, you know, I won't shout out to who it is, but the major company uh, to try to treat amyloid heart disease uh, did uh, actually make a program, you know, no patient left behind to give a $276,000 a year drug to people who can't afford it. Why? Because this was amyloid heart disease. Turns out it's another mutation. As far as I know, there's no advantage to that mutation in terms of some mm -hmm. infectious disease or something. Um, and so you see African-American men in their 70s presenting with a really thick heart um, with so-called infiltration of this protein. Um, and what I'd love to know is whether or not uh, changing kidney dynamics with plant-based nutrition can prevent some of it, because uh, mm -hmm. I have never seen amyloid in a vegan. But you know, uh, but it's that would that would require a large uh, language model <laughs> uh, yeah. approach to a bunch of electronic health records to prove that. Um, so anyway, we we have uh, still the cholesterol guidelines. They're going to get better. Uh, and the other thing I should mention about the prevent calculator versus the ASCVD one um, is that it now will go to age thirty. Mm. Re mentioning that whole idea of starting your therapy, even if that therapy is diet and exercise, starting it earlier, paying attention to it because it's the area under the curve and telling mm -hmm. somebody, you know, oh, these numbers look bad, but you're at 39 because, and I, we don't, our calculator starts at 40. I always just say, okay, I'm going to pretend you're 40. This is what your risk would be if you had these numbers next year. And, you know, you're, you're extrapolating. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's great to have that advance and looking forward to it. Wow. That is Amazing. So when do they expect this calculator to be available? I hear that it's going to be at the end of the year. Um, okay. I, I've never actually come out with something and tell, tell people that they're going to do it before it was actually ready. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, the nice part about it is that once it's ready, anyone will be, will be able to download it. Uh, and uh, we are actually doing screenings in the African-American community uh, in Louisville with the mm -hmm. finger stick cholesterol and the blood pressure. And um, yeah, I really want to jump on it because I've always wanted, I'm going to have to check the expense, uh, the point of care cholesterol, I'm sorry, point of care creatinine 
level. All of the radiology departments have it. Uh, okay. So they don't get you die when your creatinine is 1.7. They don't know about it. Um, so I'm going to have to invest in some of those as soon as I have that calculator. Wow, that is insane. So that'll be fun to play with, with patients and discuss, but certainly I've seen patients' kidney function improve with a plant-based diet. That's a that's a no-brainer for sure. So, so the cholesterol piece there and the risk, so you're literally basing your um, assessment on this calculator and risk uh, extrapolation versus anything else, not worried about inflammatory markers or anything else, anything else that we should maybe throw in like a CAC score or oh, CT and geography, oh, anything else? This. So those are both uh, brilliant things to talk about. Uh, yes, the ASCVD risk score is out there. The MESA trial people, they actually modified it to include coronary calcium. What we've been doing with the ASCVD risk score for our, you know, our um, underserved population that we're doing in churches and community groups, and you know, we did the Juneteenth in the park. The machine's overheated because it's hot in Louisville in the summer, but but we do as much as we can. Um, that's what we use it for is to actually uh, say based on guidelines who needs the coronary calcium score. Mm. Uh, but if you do have a calcium score, you can look up the Mesa calculator. And it will actually incorporate all of those things, your diabetes, um, what your cholesterol levels are, high blood pressure, age, ethnicity, uh, and gender, and then uh, put in the calcium score, and it'll tell you the 10-year risk. I don't, I don't use it very much because we kind of know what it is that we're going to do with it. If your calcium score is very my, is zero, you're like cardiac immortal for a decade. Just become a vegan and exercise every day. OK, uh, if you are a, a, a mildly abnormal one score of one to 100. You should be on a statin as well as your whole food plant based diet and exercise. And uh, if you're moderate, that is above 100, but below 300, you really should have an antiplatelet drug thrown in there. Uh, that would be like an aspirin or a clopidogrel in addition to the statin whole food plant-based diet and exercise program. And if you're above 300, many of us would say you cross the line, you need a stress test. Mm. And so, and that people will argue with it and the insurance will argue with it. Uh, I generally do it if it's in the important arteries, 300 in the left main, 300 in the top portion of the left anterior descending the, where there's a lot of muscle if that artery went down, a uh, high fatality rate. We then go ahead and try to to, uh, to image those people. Hopefully, we get more information about how critical. I know that in the past, scores greater than 300, people would end up in the cardiac catheterization lab having a coronary angiogram. I'm not sure that I would do that without some kind of stress test or a CT angiogram to say that there's some critical narrowing. So you would do a test and a statin and an antiplatelet drug and uh uh, whole food plant-based diet and an exercise program if the score is greater than 300. Mm. Did I say whole food plant-based diet and exercise on every level? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Excellent. So, okay. So let's say when, when is it uh, necessary for someone to get a CT angiography then versus CAC? Like, like how do, how do you determine that piece into it? Yeah. If someone has a, a score that's high, but not overly high, the people with a 5,000 score, there's so much calcium that you're going to have a really hard time doing the CT angiogram. Uh, it's going to look like narrowings when there may not be narrowings. Um, and if, it, it's hard to send people without symptoms to do uh, uh, coronary angiography, but you certainly could do a nuclear stress test and see if there's a problem with flow. MRI does blood flow testing as well. Stress mm -hmm. echo can be thrown in the mix as well. My preference is nuclear just because I was, grew up that way. Um, and it's gotten better and better, particularly with PET scanning, uh, uh, replacing SPECT scanning. Mm. The PET images are just beautiful. And you can actually measure myocardial blood flow at mm. rest and stress and tell people who have multivessel disease, which everybody with a score of 5,000 does, they've got three vessel disease at least, uh, you can tell them whether or not your scan looks pretty good, but that's because it's bad everywhere. That's always right. been the weakness of nuclear. PET takes care of that by allowing you to measure the blood flow, and, and that's really good. Mm. So so I, I didn't want to get too far away from answering your other question, which is about mm -hmm. inflammation. Yes, inflammation, please. 
because I, I, I want to sh just share that everyone, my good friend, uh, Paul Ritker, good baseline uh, player. <laughs> he keep playing for Yale. He's at Harvard. Uh, the guy who discovered high sensitivity C-reactive protein, far underutilized test. Uh, and he actually proved that by taking three large trials of treatment. Uh, and it was the omega-3, it was statins, uh, and taking predominantly the statin intolerant uh, people and taking a look at what happens to them long-term if their LDL is controlled, but the inflammation is not. And it was like two to two and a half fold increase in the death rate. Mm. That got people excited. It was published in Lancet last March. Finally, I think Paul has gotten, and he's done so many studies, you know, resuvastatin, canakinumab, methotrexate. Um, and he actually uh, was uh, behind a lot of the colchicine um, uh, recommendations to lower inflammation. Well, guess what? Uh, the FDA actually approved colchicine specifically for this. And I'm pretty sure it has something to do with Paul and his studies for so-called residual inflammatory risk. Now, the problem is that I'm trying to tell, I'm always uh, hassling Paul mercilessly about being completely vegan because that is one thing. So if you look at David Jenkins' portfolio diet starting in 2003 and every study he's done afterwards, the best way to get your LDL and your C-reactive protein is a virtual tie between statins and a whole food plant-based diet. Why not do them both if you have significant coronary heart disease? Uh, so I'm hoping that people will full of inflammatory risk and realize that, you know, every time you eat, I don't hate to say this on a broadcast, but it's uh, a carcass of, of an animal. Every time you do that, you are introducing inflammation. Um, someone that made it sort of a, a side, I'd been saying that carcass thing for a while, uh, you know, trying to be gentle about it, but unfortunately being real. Uh, someone made a great joke out of it and said, you know, uh, I tell my patients to go home, open the refrigerator. If there are any dead bodies, bury them in the backyard. <laughs> so. I'm All right. Yet yeah, another Dr. Kim Williamism I'm going to be using. <laughs> I have so many from you. Well, that makes that's an interesting question, though. So let's say you have someone with a CRP who's eating a whole food plant based diet but they're not under one on their HSCRP, right. but maybe hit between like a 1.5 and a two, not necessarily in the other immune disease. And we can't quite figure it out. Like there's no other indicators. What do you do with those type of folks? Kind so of first of all, them. just recognizing it is, is tremendous. Um, and I don't see, I, we don't do this test enough because a lot of payers still won't pay it, pay for it. Mm. Um, but if you do have one of those and they're on a statin and a whole food plant-based diet and they're exercising, uh, you have to, I usually say that you have to look for something else. What is the cause? And uh, a rheumatologic workup is really good, but usually the rheumatologic disorders that have a high CRP will actually present with symptoms, joint right. pain, skin changes, that sort of thing, shortness of breath from their lung disease. Um, but you know, you got to see, is there a problem with the teeth? Is, uh, uh, gingival yeah. disease, is there, you know, uh, an ingrown toenail, something makes that CRP go up mm. and, uh, when I did the church trial, I actually had to call up Paul Ritker and say, hey, you know, I got some really strange thing with a 0.5 and I put them on a vegan diet and now it's 10. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, they got a, they got some that vegan food caught in their tooth <laughs> and you got some inflammation. You measure it while that tooth is sore, it's going to be off the chart. So he told me that anyone with a value, a baseline or after their intervention of 10 or more, you have to take them out of the study because it's something else. Right. Um, but, but that doesn't mean it's not a cardiac risk just because right. it's something else. This is why your lupus patients and your rheumatoid arthritis, Strogan syndrome, and, and people with sepsis, all of them are at risk for heart attacks. Mm, interesting. Inflammation. So yeah, teeth, that's a good, that's a good reminder to ask people about their, their tooth situation. That's a very good reminder. Um, Yes. And part of my summit, you know, I've interviewed you as well as I'm going to have a dentist on and discuss about dental health and, and cardiac and risk and such. Um, so my question also about, I get a lot of questions around menopause and increased risk of cardiac events. Any thoughts or suggestions on that at all, or what you've seen in your practice? Really important um, to recognize that when estrogen levels drop, the cholesterol starts to turn to a uh, 
uh, less protective uh, levels. The LDL goes up, the HDL goes down. And in addition to that, um, the it's sort of like women catch up with men in terms of their risk. They're so protected uh, until menopause. Well, one of the best ways to handle that is a whole food plant-based diet and exercise. <laughs> okay. Soy. Uh, it turns out <laughs> exactly. And soy, uh, particularly soy, um, because the phytoestrogens, and I hit I have to have this conversation. So many people have heard that soy is bad for you. And I'm going, yeah, please look at the modern literature. And what you right. realize all of that was wrong. There is a tree bark in Southeast Asia that had phytoestrogens that turned into a big drug, Taxol. Okay, mm -hmm. and for breast cancer after, uh, uh, therapy, well, that's because phytoestrogens do protect against these Asian populations where there's a lot of tofu. There's very little breast cancer. Now it's complicated by the fact that they're thinner, and mm -hmm. you can uh, knock that down. The other side of it that's really important. Sorry, Dr. Williams, you're frozen. One sec. Okay, you were just saying, because we froze there for a second, about um, being thinner can be an issue, then we we lost you there. Oh, thank you. So just saying that, the, that when people always say more tofu in Southeast Asia and less breast cancer, but remember that they're thinner as well, mm. and obesity is a risk factor for developing breast cancer. Mm. Uh, so it's, uh, but the last thing I was going to say about it is that, you know, really when people are starting to approach menopause, think carefully about whole food plant-based diet, adding soy, because you can actually make menopause a lot more pleasant. Um, it really does tend to tamp down those symptoms. I wouldn't say pleasant. I'd say less unpleasant. <laughs> but how would you know? You're like 25 years away from that. You right? are, <laughs> you are a doll. No, no, <laughs> no, no. I just turned 53 and. That is, oh I am in full swing. Uh, <laughs> it's like, Congratulations. I think, Imagine yeah. how much worse it would be if you weren't whole food plant-based diet. Well, you know, I do eat a whole food plant-based diet. What's interesting though, is I'm still having some symptoms. I'm sure not, a, but my mother and my grandmother, like they suffered for five, 10 years. Like I think I'm genetically, is, but it is, it is a very, I have a new found sympathy for what a hot flash means. It's like your internal combustion is <laughs> like, turn on, you're like, <laughs> Yeah, warm in here. Usually, I'm always cold. I'm like, this is a new paradigm for me. Oh wow, my goodness! <laughs> but the, no, I just bought some uh, Eden's uh, brand, the black soybeans. Like, I'm like, I'm down in half a cup or a cup a day now because I was doing know. soy milk and other stuff, but not. I'm I'm <laughs> triple quadrupling well, my. Oh, so good. Your LDL is going to go down. Your CRP is going to go down. Story yeah. My LDL is already low, so I'm not I'm not as worried about that. But uh, my CAC score is zero and all that oh, good stuff. But that's <laughs> tremendous. yeah, tremendous. oh gosh. Well, I know you have a class to teach, so I will say thank you here. I think it's a great place to pause, and I'm sure we can continue our conversation at another time. But this is great. Thank you do. so much for your Absolutely. time. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks so much. Take care now.